Hey Houston, it's Thinko the Realtor with another market update of what's going on in the economy and there's a lot of trouble lying ahead that can impact the housing market further and it can speed up the housing correction that we're currently in. So the first thing I want to share is mortgage applications sank 14% in the last week of September and that is the biggest drop since the shutdowns in April of 2020 and that has now put us at the lowest levels since 1997. Now this is a little skewed because it takes the refinances with the purchases however the population today is much bigger than it was in 1997 and especially with the boom that we've had here in the greater Houston area so keep all that in mind so it's still a lot worse um, than those numbers are indicating because I want to show you all what's happening with the mortgage applications on the purchase side and right here if we take a look at it combined they're down 69 percent refinances 86 again that doesn't impact housing market we want to focus right here on the purchase index falling 39 percent now what that means is, is let's say there's a hundred thousand people that were applying for a mortgage last year nationwide there's only 600,000 applying now or in Houston let's say there's 10,000 buyers applying for a mortgage and now there's only 6,000 and the reason that it's even worse than what those numbers are indicating is because people that are applying are not able to be approved because they're not able to qualify for the house that they would like or being able to qualify at all because of these high home prices and high interest rates or they do get approved they have that pre-approval letter from the bank stating hey this person's approved they can qualify and they can purchase your home however they're deciding to sit on the sidelines at a higher rate because they don't want to buy a house because of their interest rates of that payment shock that they're seeing so the buyer pool just keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and inventory just keeps going up and up and remember that houston has the greatest inventory on backlog of new construction and all that new construction inventory nationwide is going to start hitting the markets here in the fall and in the winter now i want to show this chart here it says that a 29% drop in purchasing power since the beginning of 2021. And as we see here, interest rates going up and then the amount that you're able to afford going down. So right here, it was almost $550,000 that you were able to get at a 2500 monthly payment now it's down almost to $375,000 and it's actually worse than that 29% because it's not even taking into account the increase in taxes and the increase in insurance and insurance and taxes are a big indicator on a monthly payment in the greater Houston area and the taxes being a year behind and being by the time they're finalized they're only starting to hit the buyers now in having to be qualified to their debt to income ratios so all all of that stuff is further going to impact the buyer pool and keep shrinking it as inventory is going up and everybody's saying hey how come the market is not crashing i hear it in the news everybody's saying well remember in 08 09 it didn't just happen overnight it's not like the stock market it isn't just going to come down split second day overnight and things like that it's going to take a little while so we're at the beginning stages and we're waiting for that snowball to start happening and there's other things and other dominoes that can fall and impact that even further and faster so if we take a look san francisco went up and they went down pretty dang quickly here about a year once they started bottoming down now seattle went up slower but they also came down slower and took a little while longer a couple of years to bottom out so if we take a look anything that went up fast went down fast as well and right now the market's like um phoenix and las vegas are the well here in this in this old article no 809 and that's on my previous videos is a bigger indicator of what's actually happening in the housing market right now because everything just kind of skyrocketed and as we see here it kind of started plummeting and dallas they have it here in this article is a good indicator of what we can kind of expect now home prices in texas weren't that bad before and now everything kind of started skyrocketing and as texas is considered the second most overvalued housing market in the nation so the bubble missed texas didn't impacted that much last time once the home prices start correcting and those dominoes start falling and a snowball start rolling it's definitely going to impact houston much harder and much quicker than it did last time and then that new inventory that's also going to be hitting the market and they're saying that the consumers that the um, american population has never been better prepared financially because of the record savings we had well check this out the credit card debt has jumped 100 billion or 13 percent so that is the biggest percentage increase in more than 20 years so what happened to americans being so prepared with all this money that was saved it doesn't look like it right because you wouldn't be tapping into credit cards if you had that savings there it's because the inflation is wrecking havoc on the u.s population and if we take a look here at this graph 
it was record breaking savings at 35% that Americans were having at the beginning of 2020 when the lockdowns were just happening. And 1.6 trillion is a lot of money. However, if you divide that by 129 million households in America, it only ends up being like 12 or $13,000 per household. And you can run through that savings in a month or two or three once you really need it. So it's really not that big of a safety net. Plus, we see that the consumer credit card debt is starting to increase at a very, very fast pace, meaning that people are now having to tap into their savings because they're not able to afford as high inflation. And if we take a look at the graph, at the beginning of 2021, after another little nice skyrocket in savings, it's been depleting itself. And this part right here this black line is a eight percent average so if it's eight percent it's considered healthy and anything above that and as we see here we've been running below that since the end of 2021 and all of 2022 and right now the last six months average americans have been saving only 3.5 percent so that's just nothing so somebody loses their job they're able to make what one or two monthly payments what about the food and all that so there's really not that much savings 1.6 trillion sounds like a whole lot of money but when you actually divide that and some people maybe saved 50 or a hundred thousand dollars whereas others only saved one or two so that's also misleading it's just the average not really an indicator of what an average american saved because somebody who wasn't traveling and and who had a higher paying job was probably saving a lot more money than somebody who was living by paycheck to paycheck and not going on these vacations and not spending money on excess stuff and the global economy is not doing good so the world bank it says that the risk of the global recession in 2023 rises as simultaneous rate hikes and we see here across the world there are rate hikes and that's because the entire world is overheated they're overheated their economy so this is econ 101 and we are technically in a recession as i stated in the previous videos i don't know when they changed it but in all of my econ classes two negative gdp terms in a row is considered a recession we've had that i don't know when they changed the the term of that but uh we're, they're saying we're going into a recession where well, we're in it and if the 0809 housing bubble could cause a global recession well right now we see that the entire world is struggling with their overheated economy and the whole world is expecting some kind of recession canada is doing a lot worse right now than they did in 0809 and it hasn't even fully unraveled and they're one of our top three trading partners and the uk as we saw in the news is doing really really bad so they're probably like our top 10 or top 15 trading partner so if all of these countries are being impacted well who are we going to sell and buy goods from if everybody is struggling and if an 0809 the u.s economy could cause it in the in the entire world well if the entire world is going it can definitely impact us here and so keep that in mind we have the car bubble as well people were paying overpaying on msrp paying for a car that was a year or two old for what new cars were being sold cars that were seven eight years old were being sold almost at what people bought them you know seven or eight years ago at msrp out the door so they were only maybe 30%, 20% less. And so all that stuff is getting adjusted. And so there's all these dominoes, all of the overinvesting that, that happened with the tech companies. So one of these dominoes falls, and if they all fall, it's gonna be really, really bad. And if only half of them fall, it's still going to be a pretty bad recession and if only one or two or three of these dominoes fall it's still going to impact the housing market and the housing market right now is is really the the part that's in the most trouble because if there's a recession and people go unemployed it's going to impact it if they're trying to fix the unemployment trying to fix the inflation and continue increasing the interest rates and inflation is going to make mortgage rates higher that's also going to impact housing so housing is kind of stuck in the middle and it's just going to be impacted from all sides so make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that like button leave a comment below what you think is going to happen to the houston housing market and until next time have a great day